on his way to the hospital when you saw the open slot there. Well, that's going to dramatically change the points chase for this title. Now, Doug Henry, who was only one point behind Jeremy and ahead of him in that moto, would have probably taken over the lead. Now, he's out of the picture. So the next closest guy in the title chase is Jeff Emick, who finished right behind Jeremy in the first moto. There you see the heat, uh, the riders getting uh, the sideboards not only to communicate, but you can also wave them and get a little air on you. There you see the 30-second board. It goes down. We're just about set for the gate to drop on moto number two here at Bud's Creek. Well, let's see as they go up the hill who gets the hole shot. Looks like Emick's out in front right now. Emick looks like he's definitely got a clean start. Some congestion in the back, and LaRocca was on the inside going into the corner. It was a nice place to be, uh, even if he didn't get the hole shot. So he should come out of that pretty good. These riders all get it fired back up on their way. Look at Jeff Emig as he leads Jeremy McGrath. But look at LaRocco coming up on the inside. He sweeps around McGrath to take over that second spot. And if there's any question about LaRocco's fitness, I think it's been answered today. Definitely. And also Damon Bradshaw. I'm not sure where he started in the first moto. I didn't notice. But he came from off the pace to finish fifth. If he got a better start this time, he could be a factor. Well, just as soon as we talk about LaRocco, he gets relegated back to the third spot as Jeremy has gotten around him. And look, here comes the Suzuki. Is that Albertine getting into the side of LaRocca? Looking for that fork guard again. <laughs> Put that in your arsenal. Now Jeremy sweeps around Jeff Emick. McGrath taking over the lead, but just for a second as Emick comes back. But Jeremy up the double manages to pull out in front. And this is just the first lap, folks, as Jeremy McGrath is moved out into the lead on the first lap. Emick with the whole shot. There you get a look at the... Honda Field Summary, back with more exciting action from Bugs Creek right after this. Welcome back to Bugs Creek, Maryland. Art Eckman, David Bailey, and John Kernan bringing you the action as we are in the early stages of moto number two. Damon Bradshaw right there behind LaRocco looking good. Drowsy off to a pretty good start. John Bell sort of off the pace today. Well, there you see Jeremy McGrath who got around Jeff Emick just before we went to break trying to pull out to just a slight advantage. Jeremy, the only rider this year so far to be a repeat winner in motos. Of course, Jeremy winning the overall at Gainesville, and he also had a moto victory at Mount Morris, where his teammate Doug Henry took the overall victory, but Doug, of course, with that horrifying crash in moto number one. Of course, we saw when they took him to the ambulance, he gave the thumbs-up sign to the fans, so that was quite encouraging for Doug Henry fans. Now, on the track, Emick trying to put the move on McGrath. They come up the hill, and he will swing Wing to the outside, and Jeff Emig, what a great move as Jeremy went inside. Emig making the pass. Oh, it was a great move, and Emig set that up in the corner before. He carried, he squared it off, carried one speed up the hill here. Jeremy's going to try to turn on this inside where there's no berm, and it's real slick. Emig goes out there, he can lay it into that berm and be more aggressive, goes right around the outside. He also controls the inside off the drop off into the next corner, caught Jeremy sleeping. Well, McGrath, of course, making that hairpin, trying to cut it off on the inside. You really have to get on the brakes, almost come to a complete stop to make that work. And you see what happens when Emig was just right there to make the move. He's moved back out in front. And look at Greg Albertine, who's moved into the third position, riding fourth right now. Mike LaRocco, who won moto number one. Morocco, it'd be interesting to see now if Morocco can come through the pack, and that's what he usually does. And uh, people are always saying stuff like, boy, he had a couple more laps. Well, we'll see what he can do from the, uh, from the a poor start. And Jeremy, I think when he got around uh, Emig, probably just figured that was that. And Emig retaliating and doing exactly what it takes to beat Jeremy McGrath and take him out of his rhythm, and we'll see if it works. Well, I know in talking with Jeff Emig, just the amount of confidence that the guy has. You know, he moves up from 125. He used to call him Mr. 125. There you see Damon Bradshaw is uh, back uh, making his way into the top five. But getting back to Jeff Emig, just his confidence level this year is just unbelievable in his first year on the 250s outdoor. Well, 250 just seems to suit some riders a lot better. Doug Henry had also made a successful transition, and also Larry Ward looking better. They get to ride the 250 all year long in Supercross and in outdoors, and Emig uh, doing a good job of it. Now Emig on the outside as uh, Jeremy McGrath tries to cut it in, but look at Greg Albertine. He is really closed up, and we have got a great three-way battle for the lead. Now Jeremy following Emig on the outside tries to cut it off just a little bit short, but it doesn't work as Emig holds on to that first spot. And I would have expected to see these three guys that you know, are in a race with themselves possibly hold each other up. Maybe Emig's got to ride a little more defensive. And to see Luraco catch up to these guys, but he hasn't done that. If anything, he's lost time. So these guys are going fast. 
Well, there you see LaRocco coming back into the picture. He is probably about a second to two seconds behind Albertine, but we know LaRocco, the way he's ridden in the past, could make that up in a amount of no time and probably about one lap if he sets his mind to it. Well, Jeff Emig is your leader. Let's check in his pits. Steve Butler, you're always so cool in the pits. Uh, do you ever get excited when Jeff has the lead like this? Yeah, it's hard not to, but there's still a lot of race to go. And uh, the last moment, Jeff felt his best at the end, so I think he's pretty strong, and I think he can maybe win this. He might say Emig is just about due for an overall victory at Gainesville, fourth, second in Hangtown, and fifth at Mount Morris. Well, I think he can maybe win this. Doesn't sound real confident to me. And there goes Jeremy up the inside. Well, Jeremy McGrath making that look easy. Coming up the inside on the double. Gets on the gas a little bit sooner and gets around Emig to move into the lead. Here's another look at it. Well, they've just come out of the right hander. They're heading up to the double jump. And Jeremy is going to choose to go up the inside. He'll control the inside of the corner. And Jeremy just keeps the bike low to the ground. Watch his body right here. He puts the bike down on the ground with the throttle wide open. Much more aggressive than Jeff. And you can see the difference right there. Takes perfect time. Timing to do that doesn't he? Really can wind up in a lot of trouble. Sure, Jeremy's just much more aggressive at, at putting the bike in the places he wants it to go, missing certain bumps, hopping over bumps, and getting it back down to the ground sooner. Usually, he soaks up uh, most of the, the lift in the motorcycle at the peak of the jumps with his body, and he keeps the bike lower to the ground. There you see Greg Albertine as he's trying to take over that second spot. He's putting a lot of pressure on Jeff Emig. Alby finished ninth at Gainesville overall, came back with a third at Hangtown, and then a disappointing 11th overall at Mount Morris. Uh, that's not the way he's wanted to start out this outdoor season, but it looks like he's back in shape today as he is trying to chase down Jeff Emig. But, David, look at the amount of distance that Jeremy McGrath has put on Jeff Emig, who sits in second place. We get a good look at the top ten in our Honda Fuel Summer. Back at Bud's Creek, Maryland, Art Edmund, David Manning, and John Kernan. There you look at uh, Mike LaRocca, who won the first moto, and he's got around Jeff Emig. Emig is starting to fade. He's dropped all the way back to the fourth spot. Jeremy McGrath is the leader. Greg Albertine is riding in second place. Well, what set up that move uh, uh, a moment ago was Jeremy was being pressured by Albertine. Albertine had really picked up the pace, was pressuring him, and he said, I got to get out of here. He moved around Emig, and in the process, he's picked up the pace and pulled away from everyone, and LaRocco was also his sights on Jeremy McGrath, realized if he wants to win the overall, he's got to chase McGrath, and, and uh, he's staying in pretty close contact. The two fastest riders on the track right now have got to be LaRocco and McGrath. Well, there you see LaRocco and Jeff Emig right along in the fourth spot. LaRocco is in third. He is in contact with Albertine, but McGrath has pulled out to a pretty sizable advantage. And, you know, we've seen, you see it in Supercross. You see it outdoors this year, at least, when Jeremy gets out front. He's a rocket ship, and he is gone, and it's hard to catch him. Nearly impossible. Well, he's pretty smart the rest of the time. When he doesn't win, um, he's been sick this season, and he still holds the points. Though. He really hasn't ridden that good. I know he's just going to get faster and stronger and more confident outdoors as the season rolls along. And right now, it seems like he's already pretty much unstoppable and in control of the points change. Well, Jeremy with uh, two moto victories this year. And he's sixth uh, at Hangtown is the only British out of the top five. But he is definitely the rider to beat right now. Still looking back at this third-place battle between Morocco and Jeff. Pandemic. And remember our flashback, these two battling for that 125 championship here back, what was it, three years ago. And that was when Emic was able to uh, come through with the victory. Morocco was having that problem. But right now, these guys are having a lot of fun as they come down the hill. Morocco still holding that third position. As you get a look at Albertine, Albie just getting ready to make the turn. Morocco might have, looks like he might have lost a little bit of ground. And there you see Jeff Emic has pulled in just a little bit closer. So Emic trying to work his way back up into the third spot. Well, as mechanic Steve Butler said that he rides stronger towards the end of the race. and. If anything, that's probably the best time to do it and to put the pressure on Morocco because probably if Morocco has a weakness, it's the end of the race. We're having not been able to ride in competition and with uh, the uncertainty of the arm. Of course, everyone making a big deal about Morocco coming back, also Bradshaw coming back, but it's a little bit different. Morocco has only missed about two months. Bradshaw, on the other hand, a year and a half, almost two years. Well, they're both coming back fresh, but uh, Morocco doesn't have to relearn everything and figure out. Bradshaw's riding against different riders. He's riding on uh, some tracks he hasn't ridden on before, and everything's different. Even the motorcycle has changed quite a bit since the last time he was riding, so he's got a long ways to go, and 
He's already shown some promise. Out of the second half of the season, Damon Bradshaw is going to be a name you can hear a lot about at the top of the leaderboards here in the Outdoor Nationals for the 250 Series. I hope so, because he's one of the crowd favorites. He's one of my favorite riders, and he does have the potential to ride well. And he's aggressive. He'll get in there and make a race out of things, but first he's got to be in the race to uh, make any kind of moves, and right now he's a little bit off the pace. Well, let's talk about what we're watching, and that is Michael Rocco. He won the very first moto. He is now riding along in the third spot. Jeff Emick is in fourth, and now we start to look at the overall with Jeremy out front. Jeremy finished second in the first moto. That means uh, if he can stay in first right now, he's going to take the overall victory over LaRocco. LaRocco has to pick up some spots. Right. And the thing with LaRocco being in the picture now, after missing two races and being pretty much out of the points race, is that he is really helping McGrath right now by being between uh, McGrath and Emig right here. He's going to give McGrath an advantage. And, and uh, in a sense, in the first moto by, by McGrath being second and Emig right there in third, it, it's almost like McGrath won the race because really you can't even really count LaRocco. So this is a big advantage for McGrath. Well, speaking of LaRocco, in fact, LaRocco will really get the overall as long as Jeremy is leading. LaRocco has to get up to the front and pass Jeremy and actually go 1-1. Because if he would finish second here, it would be a tie, and the tiebreaker would go to Jeremy. That's right. And, you know, Jeremy is, as I mentioned, he's pretty clever. He knows when to go hard, when to take it easy. And if LaRocco caught him and he was pushing him hard out of his comfort zone, McGrath would just take it easy and go for the points. Well, here's a look at the Honda Field Summary. Back with more in a moment. It's getting down to put up or shut up here in the closing stages. In moto number two here at Bud's Creek, Maryland battle for third. LaRocco, the winner of moto number one, trying desperately to hold off Jeff Emig. Emig making an inside move. The rear wheel kicks out, touches LaRocco's front wheel, and Jeff Emig has moved into that third spot. Well, that's the aggressive move I was talking about that you've got to make to make a pass on this racetrack. And LaRocco's going fast enough, but you can't make a pass anywhere unless he makes a mistake. He's not going to. Emig senses he's got to get around, and that's an important move for Emig. All these guys are thinking title, and Morocco's thinking title too. Yeah, I can't have it, no matter how good I do. And they take the white flag. We are on the last lap. This is the battle, the battle for third place. Jeff Emig just getting around. Mike LaRocco, Greg Albertini's in second, but nobody is within striking distance of our leader, Jeremy McGrath. Unless Jeremy falls, he's going to pick up his third moto victory of the season. And with his second in moto number one, he will take home the overall victory today. But look at Emig. Emig, after he got around LaRocco for that third spot, he has put some distance, and now Emig might still have enough time time to challenge for the second spot. Well, uh, maybe. <laughs> I think uh, Albertine's really going to have to blow it here. He's been riding pretty solid all day. But look at Emig. Emig has closed in. At least now Albertine, he can see him. And if you can see him, you can smell him. If you smell him, you can hunt him down, right? <laughs> uh, possibly. <laughs> it's deceiving. When they get into the tight stuff, it seems like they're closer than you really are. As soon as they get to a straightaway, it opens back up. But, you know, you can never quit trying. Once you keep the pressure on somebody, this could force him into a mistake. And uh, that would give him some valuable points. Back up front, there is Jeremy McGrath, the leader. He has a pretty good lead over Albertine. Jeremy coming down the hill. You can hear the fans in the background cheering him on. You see the Homer hankies is what they call them in baseball. I don't know what we can call them in uh, motocross where the fans have them and wave them around. They uh, seem to be a big favorite of the fans here at Bud's Creek, Maryland. Look at how far forward Jeremy rides on the motorcycle. Look at his head's almost over the handlebars. You can look at his front number plate almost, and that's that's that aggressive uh, riding style that's uh, worked so well for him in the Supercross, and now it's starting to pay off in the outdoor. He's doing a little style for the fans already. A little wave over there. You never did that when you were winning on the last lap, did you? You didn't wave to the fans and all that show. Uh, like I, I never you. could. I always had Brock Weber or Bob Hanna or somebody <laughs> breathing down my neck. <laughs> I'm sure you had some runaway victories just like this guy. Occasionally. <laughs> Bring a smile to your faces. I'm sure this young man riding number three, the Honda Red Rider, Jeremy McGrath, has a big ear-to-ear -ear smile underneath that helmet as he is leading about to wrap up his second overall victory of the season. Comes up the hill around the last turn. A little bit of a wheelie as he comes over. The checkered flag is out. 